There's something about Affinity that will kind of drive you crazy if you don't know how it works. And that is the difference between a pixel layer and an image layer. On the surface, they look the same, but there's some subtle differences in how they work. So let's see how to use them and free yourself of frustration. I have this document open here in Affinity. This is the new free version of Affinity, which you can download from affinity.studio. You can see I have two pictures of a cat here in my document. And here they are in my layer stack. Now the cat on the left is a pixel layer and the cat on the right is an image layer. How do I know that? Well, if I hover my cursor over the sides of the layers, you'll notice this one on the left says pixel, and down here this one on the right says image. Let's look at one way they're different. I'll select the paintbrush over here on the right. I'll change my color to something bright and green so it's easy to see. Let's choose something around there. And I'll make sure this left cat is selected, and I'll paint on it. And you'll see I've actually painted on the pixels of this cat. You can even see it on the little thumbnail over here too. So far, nothing that special, but now let's select the image layer, the cat on the right. So I'll go over here and I'll click on this one. This is the right cat. I have my paintbrush still selected. And let's do the same thing. I'll paint on it over here. And notice what happened in the layer stack. It created a new layer above my image layer. And I can actually toggle that layer on and off. It says before, after, before, after. This is an example of a non-destructive operation. Affinity was trying to protect my original image. And this is the key difference between pixel layers and image layers. With pixel layers, we can essentially overwrite the data within them. And that's not always bad. It's very useful for things like digital painting. But image layers will try to protect this data, which is very useful for things like photographs. When we place an image or paste it, typically it will be brought in as an image layer. So if I right click on this photo here, this is a website Unsplash. I'll say copy image. Let's go back to Affinity. I'll say file, new from clipboard. And you can see it comes in as an image layer over here. However, if you open a file like a JPEG directly, typically it will be opened as a pixel layer. Let's look at another difference between pixel and image layers, this time with the eraser brush. So I'll select the eraser brush tool here. And now I'll select my pixel layer here and I'll start erasing. And that pixel information is permanently gone. I can undo it and that works for operations that I just recently did, but if I want to restore something that was 50 operations ago, it's going to be very inconvenient. So for all intents and purposes, the eraser brush is destroying pixels. Once again, very good for digital painting perhaps, but not great for photographs. Let's see what happens if we do the same thing on the image layer. I'll select the image layer here. I still have my eraser selected. Let's erase. And I can see something different happened. If I expand the layer, it actually added a mask to that layer. And even though it looks like part of the cat is gone, if I toggle this layer on and off, you can see the data is still there. So it wasn't permanently destroyed. A mask is a non-destructive way of erasing content. If I select back to my paintbrush, I can restore that content by selecting the color to white. And with my mask selected, if I paint back on, I can restore that content. And this is the benefit of a mask. You can always get back what you erased. The paintbrush and eraser brush work very well with image layers. They're able to convert them to non-destructive operations. But some tools actually can't work non-destructively, and they'll try to convert your image layer to a pixel layer. One example is the inpainting brush. This tool is really nice for removing objects from our photo, but by default, the operation is destructive. So let's take a look. I have this image here of some birds. I'll choose the inpainting brush over here. I'll click inpainting brush. And by the way, I'm in the pixel studio. If you're in Vector Studio, you might not see that by default, but if you're in the Pixel Studio, it's more obvious. Now I'll have this bird's layer selected. I'll make my brush bigger. And I'll paint over this bird. Now notice I got this message. Affinity warned me that it rasterized the layer. And you can see my layer now is converted to a pixel layer. Close this. So that was a destructive operation. And unless I undo this operation, I'm going to permanently lose that pixel information. So that's something to be aware of. Thankfully, the inpainting brush actually gives us a way to avoid this. Let me undo that. So I'm back to my image layer here. To get around this, I'll create a new pixel layer. So I'll click this button here, pixel layer. And now I still have my inpainting brush selected. This tool has a key feature that allows you to operate on the layers below it. So I'm on my pixel layer, but up here with my inpainting brush selected, instead of working on the current layer, I'll say current layer and below. So this means it will actually look at the data below my current layer, but it will modify the layer I'm on. So let's actually use it so you can see what's happening. I'll click and drag here. And it got rid of my bird. But if I toggle off this pixel layer, you can see my original image is still there. 
Let me just show you what the pixel layer is. If I hide the original layer, that's what the tool did. It filled in this new sky on the layer above and it kept the layer below. So it's a way to do it non-destructively. But if you're not aware of that trick and you did it on the original layer, you can lose your content. Not all tools have a non-destructive alternative like that, but it's definitely useful to see if they do have that current layer and below feature up here. If you do need to rasterize an image, one thing you should understand is that the pixel resolution will be locked into the image's current size. I'll give you an extreme example in this case. On the right, I have this image layer here. Let's select it. I'll make it really small, just to exaggerate it. Then I'll right click on it and I'll choose rasterize. Then I'll make it big again, let's zoom it up. And notice how it's very low resolution. This is because it locked into that resolution when I had it very small and rasterized it. So if you have to rasterize something, I recommend rasterizing it at its original size. Let's undo this. So I have it back to an image layer again. With this layer selected, what I could do is click this drop down up here. Let's say original size. And then from here, I can right click on it. I'll choose rasterize. And I've preserved as much data as possible. And I can make it smaller if I like. And there we go. Are there any topics for Affinity you'd like to see a video on? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.